Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, we are pleased to commence the inauguration ceremony of Newman University's president. In keeping with the dignity of this ceremony, please turn off your cell phones and pagers. I would like to begin by thanking Dr. Yuki Ishida, our sign language interpreter, Maria Ilya, and the Basilica Brass, under the direction of Art Green, for providing the musical prelude to today's ceremony. Bearing the mace of Newman University, the President of the Faculty Senate, Dr. Robert Till, Associate Professor of Management, President of the Faculty Senate. of Newman University. the staff members of Newman University. Members, the esteemed faculty of Newman University. Thank you. 
the academic deans of Newman University. St. Joseph's University, St. Bonaventure University, St. Francis College, Swarthmore College, Wilson College, Seton Hill University, Williamson College of the Trades, the University of Scranton, Delaware Valley University, Loyola Marymount University, Immaculata University, Chestnut Hill College, Nazareth College, Eastern University, Wilkes University, Silver Lake College, Manor College, Whitted Mercy University, Marymount University, the Association of Independent Colleges and Universities of Pennsylvania, Cabrini College, Alvernia University, Cooney, Borough of Manhattan Community College, and Pennsylvania State University, Brandywine. The Vice Presidents of Newman University, and the Board of Trustees of Newman University. Our distinguished guests. Congregational Minister of the Sisters of St. Francis of Philadelphia, Sister Mary Catherine Doherty, Archbishop Most Reverend Philip Charles Chaput, and ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce the President of Newman University, Dr. Christopher Domes. On behalf of everyone at Newman University, I bid you welcome on this historic occasion. Please stand and join in the singing of our national anthem, performed by Dr. Yuki Yoshida, accompanied by the Basilica Brass, under the direction of Art Green. Stripes and bright stars. 
remain standing. I welcome to the podium now the most Reverend Charles J. Chaput, Archbishop of Philadelphia, who will give the invocation. Good afternoon, everyone. This is a beautiful day in the life of the university, so let's settle our hearts for a moment of prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, let us pray. Almighty Father, we praise you for the saving word of your Son and the gift of the Holy Spirit to know and live in your truth. Today, we ask you to look with kindness and mercy upon Dr. Chris Domes, the new president of Newman University, and upon all of us assembled for this inaugural ceremony. May the Franciscan tradition of Catholic education be strengthened and encouraged under his leadership. May the administration, faculty, staff, and most of all the students of this university become more vivid witnesses to the peace and goodness of the Lord. Through Christ our Lord, amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Please be seated. The inauguration of a university president offers an opportunity for reflection as we see ourselves heirs to a rich tradition of intellectual endeavor, reaching back centuries to the great centers of learning in the old world. First and foremost, we welcome all of the sisters of St. Francis of Philadelphia who are gathered with us today. We also welcome the delegates from other colleges and universities. We also greet the members of the Newman University student body, Newman University staff, as well as the faculty and deans of Newman University. We offer a special welcome to Newman University's First Lady, Mrs. Mary Domes, and the members of the Domes family who are seated in the audience. We welcome as well all the members of our Board of Trustees who could be with us today. There. We are also honored to host this distinguished platform party whose members have come together today to bring greetings from the groups they represent as Newman University moves forward under the leadership of a new president. I offer the warmest of welcomes to all of our distinguished guests. I am pleased to welcome to the podium Ms. Rihanna Williams, Student Government Vice President for Academic Affairs. Today she brings the greetings of the student body to Newman University's new president. Good afternoon, Newman University. Welcome students, family, friends, and distinguished guests. I would like to share a secret with you, so come close. <laughs> Mother Teresa once said, let us always meet each other with a smile, for the smile is the beginning of love. So let's all take the time to remember our first experience here at Newman University. Your first day at class, first day eating in the cafeteria, your first day at practice, and most importantly, your first day someone reached out a friendly helping hand. This afternoon, is one of those days to always remember. An historic moment for not only Newman University, but also for all of us here in attendance, as well as the alumni nationwide. Today, we welcome the university's sixth president. And as the student body representative, I am pleased to officially welcome Dr. and Mrs. Domes to the Newman family. As we always do, Let's continue to be the great community we are known for and open our home and hearts to our newest members, Dr. Domes and Mrs. Domes. 
Thank you. Thank you, Ray. Next, it is my pleasure to introduce a representative of the Newman University staff, Mrs. Marty Krupiak, who extends her salutations on behalf of all of her colleagues as she offers their greetings to President Domes. Good afternoon. The staff of Newman University is pleased to welcome all of you. Thank you for coming and joining us today as we celebrate the inauguration of our sixth president, Dr. Chris Domes. Today, Dr. Domes joins an elite group of leaders. Newman University has been blessed through the years with powerful, effective, and passionate leadership. This leadership has taken us from being a vision shared by the Sisters of St. Francis to a thriving university shared by a community. The path in between was both challenging and rewarding filled with the trials and tribulations that preclude any worthwhile endeavor. The difference between our success and our failure was the dedication, vision, and faith of our leaders. The Newman community is founded on the principles of St. Francis and St. Clair. Our connection to each other is our mutual conviction for the Franciscan mission. Each year, we highlight a different aspect of our RISE's core values. It is almost ironic that our former president, Dr. Rosalie Miranda, left during the year of service, which perfectly defined her leadership. As Dr. Domes begins his presidency, our highlighted value is excellence, defined as performing to the best of our ability the responsibilities entrusted to us. May God bless you, Dr. Domes, in your new journey, and may excellence define your leadership. So again, the staff of Newman University extends a very warm welcome to all of you, and most especially to Dr. Chris Domes and his wife, Mary. Thank you, Marty. Our next speaker is Ms. Michelle Zolnicki, president of the Newman University Alumni Association. Good afternoon to Dr. Domes, to the University Board of Trustees, to the Sisters of St. Francis of Philadelphia, the Newman University faculty, and all Newman students. It is my honor to bring you greetings and good wishes on behalf of the entire Newman University alumni family. It was 1967, 50 years ago, when Newman awarded its first degrees and initiated the creation of an alumni community that has now grown to more than 14,000. These alumni have witnessed extraordinary progress, the building of residence halls, growth in enrollment, expansion of academic programs, construction of the Miranda Center and the Mullen Communication Center, and the achievement of university status. To our new president, Dr. Domes, my pledge today is that the alumni family will continue to support the university during the very bright future that lies ahead for our alma mater we are always committed to advancing excellence. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Next, it is my pleasure to introduce a distinguished leader of the Newman University faculty, Dr. Kathleen Swanick, who will extend her salutations to Dr. Domes on behalf of the faculty. I'm humbled to be standing here as the faculty representative on this special and historic day for Newman University. But I would be remiss if we did not first recognize the Sisters of St. Francis and Dr. and Mr. Miranda for their unwavering dedication to creating a foundation of excellence for our institution. But today, we are here looking forward, and that brings me to you, Dr. and Mrs. Domes. In the short time that you've been here, You've embraced our mission with open arms and through a faculty lens have been actively engaged in all aspects of our campus. And we've particularly appreciated the dedicated time that you've spent with the listening sessions. 
I have to say that I'm relieved as I also served on the presidential search committee. <laughs> and this process, or this committee, was comprised of a large and diverse group of individuals. And there was a lot of time spent discussing the qualities that we thought were needed in our next university president. And through this process, interviews were with highly qualified candidates, and in between each meeting, the committee members had very little discussion with each other as we were busy taking notes and preparing for our next candidate. However, following our first interview with Dr. Domes, I observed this distinct calmness and sense of relief around the room. And I felt that at that moment, no matter how diverse we were as a committee, we all saw the qualities we were looking for in you, Dr. Domes. We thank you for choosing Newman. We, as faculty, welcome you with open arms, and we are prepared to work under your leadership in creating this next historic chapter for our university. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Swanick. Now please welcome Dr. Tom Flynn, representing the Association of Franciscan Colleges and Universities and the Association of Catholic Colleges and Universities. To President Domes and all of the members of the Newman community, I bring greetings from the Association of Franciscan Colleges and Universities and the Association of Catholic Colleges and Universities. I recall vividly the first time I met Chris Domes. He was part of a large, eager, and energetic group of new Catholic University presidents. I have been asked to be an informal mentor and to provide insight into how new presidents might work effectively with their boards and their sponsoring religious congregations. Now tell me, why would a new president need any advice about working with trustees and religious sponsors? Chris stood out in this group of accomplished women and men, though his presidency was, I recollect, at the smallest of the schools. He was articulate and insightful. He was connected with his students. He was direct, straightforward, and listened well. He impressed me then and has done so even more in the years that have followed. So I am very glad for Newman University, a school I respect and admire, and glad too for Chris and Mary that he is now your president. Newman is a proud Catholic Franciscan University rooted in the charism of the Sisters of St. Francis of Philadelphia and the broader heritage inherited from those iconic Franciscan founders, Francis and Claire, and today embodied by Pope Francis. And rooted too, of course, in the equally historic tradition of Catholic higher education, stretching back centuries in Europe and embedded deep within the history of our own country since Georgetown's founding in 1789. As sung famously by the great bard and boss, Bruce Springsteen, Catholic Franciscan values are indeed for Newman the ties that bind. Most of you here today, faculty, staff, and students, know already that your new president is like Newman, deeply embedded within the Franciscan charism. He was educated and later worked at our Franciscan mothership St. Bonaventures, and while he served for many years at another Catholic university, he is like the proverbial prodigal son, more recently returned home to his roots to be embraced by his Franciscan family. As I can attest from my perch up the road at Alvernia, it is a fine time to be a Catholic university president and a special opportunity to lead a Franciscan school with our Holy Father as our chief advocate and representative of the Franciscan brand. Living with right relationships with ourselves, others, and God's creation, having special commitment to serving those on the margins, or as the Holy Father says, on the peripheries, those who have been marginalized, oppressed, or are underserved in society. Embracing inclusively women and men of all races, religions, and other diverse backgrounds being peacemakers and justice seekers and servant leaders in word and deed, our modern day Francis is an inspiration for Franciscans and for all of us. Your new president knows all this, but he also feels it. 
The Franciscan spirit is in his mind, heart, and soul. He knows that being Franciscan, especially in today's world, is in many ways countercultural. It requires conviction, courage, and commitment. It demands much of oneself and of an academic community like Newman. Your new president will be unafraid of making tough decisions, of choosing what the poet Frost calls the road less traveled. And he will face challenges, even failures, openly, honestly, and from a mission-centered perspective. Newman's mission statement, celebrating education as a gift to be shared in the service of others, echoes the Franciscan educational ideal articulated by St. Bonaventure, the first great Franciscan intellectual. Bonaventure calls us to pursue knowledge joined with love, a concept inspirational for faculty and staff as you support the learning and growth of your students, and equally a concept to inspire Newman students and alumni alike to ensure the gift of your Newman education is shared with others with caring and compassionate charity. Chris, our fellow presidents from almost two dozen Franciscan colleges and universities join me in welcoming you yet again to our community of servant leaders. And the over 200 presidents of Catholic institutions applaud your lifelong commitment to Catholic higher education and wish for you many years of happiness and success with your colleagues and students at Newman. And personally on this special day, I wish for you and Mary that famous Franciscan blessing, peace and all good. Thank you, Dr. Flynn. It is now my great pleasure to introduce Mr. Don Francis, President of the Association of Independent Colleges and Universities of Pennsylvania. On behalf of the 90 independent college and university presidents in the Association of Independent Colleges and Universities of Pennsylvania, I bring greetings and warm blessings to you, Dr. Dorms. Having had the pleasure of discussing with you your vision for Newman and learning about your excellent background for this job, I know that the Board of Trustees made an excellent decision when it placed the leadership of this fine university in your hands. Your friendly manner, your business acumen, and your consensus building skills will serve you well. You will need all of these skills and more because the job of a university president is not easy. Not only must you provide leadership to a, verse, to a diverse team of individuals, you must also meet enrollment demands and fundraising goals in a very competitive higher education marketplace. Like a politician, you must also astutely balance the needs and desires of multiple constituencies. Students, parents, alumni, donors, community leaders, faculty, and trustees. And those last two groups are not easy. I will conclude my greeting with this description, which I came across several years ago. Professors know a great deal about very little and go along learning more and more about less and less until finally they know practically everything about nothing. <laughs> Presidents, on the other hand, know very little about many things and keep learning less and less about more and more until they know practically nothing about everything. <laughs> Trustees start out knowing everything about everything but end up knowing nothing about anything due to their association with presidents and professors. <laughs> I thought we said no jokes. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Francis. It's now my great pleasure to introduce Father Dan Riley representing St. Bonaventure University. Good afternoon. Are we happy? This is a place of celebration. Woo! Chris. 
Chris, Mary, your whole Franciscan community celebrates who you are in this very day, and so I, with the sisters who long ago conceived of this, sit with you in the time for new birth. I'm deeply grateful for the honor and opportunity to address you and this wonderful Franciscan University and share with you my Franciscan delight and gratitude at the inauguration of Dr. Chris Domes. There are many profound, simple, elegant truths. Your new president, president and his wife will be my heart to share. So a few. I have great love and esteem for Chris and have known him for many years through the many movements and moments of his exceptional life as a true Franciscan servant leader. I want to thank his wife Mary right away as Chris so often does and acknowledge her grace and companionship and partnership with Chris. Mary's husband has delighted in her and her gifts, especially for this great Newman University. Chris showed up at St. Bonaventure University with his warm ways, winning smile, but even more came in the door and onto our campus with young Chris Domes. I've known him since he was a freshman. I enjoyed his company immediately and was struck by his self-effacing way that I suspect reflected a youthful lack of confidence. That didn't last very long. <laughs> but not unusual for a teenager to feel this way for a time. Confidence emerged in Chris and showed him, in himself, already a leader among others. Soon Chris formed with others a wonderful circle of friends who enhanced each other at Bonas. With humor and poking fun, they encouraged each other to be the best they might be. A hallmark of Franciscan learning. Conscious or not, they were hearing their own early calls to serve others and delve into the concerns of our troubled world already then. Actions for peace, care for the poor, and the healing of our racism. I watched and heard from Chris when he began to wrestle with the big questions that faced higher education today, particularly schools grounded in a rich religious tradition. Your president, my friend, our president, Chris Domes comes into this day, into your community, with the capacity of gathering others for strategic conversations, seeking others who would long to shape the future for the good of others. Chris and his friends were <laughs> some of the first who dreamed with me and others for Mount Irenaeus and understood the value of a Franciscan mountain place, community of prayer and peaceful recreation, a place of integrating friendships, learning, living with the spirituality that is ours, that we celebrate in you today. One of his dearest friends, Father Harry Monaco, who became a Franciscan, died way too early. Still young and continuing to share Harry's own youthful dreams with youth at St. Bonaventure, Harry, I know, remains a continued example and friend of yours today, Chris. Harry, for those of us who knew him, is in our hearts in prayer today. And I'm sure Harry blesses you in a very special way, you and Mary, at Newman University right now. Harry, if you knew him, is spilling grace all over you the very way he used to spill drinks, gravy, and sauce. <laughs> when we were beginning Mount Irenaeus, we founded it with a summer community, and Chris was one of the members, along with a good friend of his, Kevin Sweenley, and a great holy and funny man, Father Dan Hurley. Chris may not know this, but he set the tone for much of our life. Whether he knew it or not, he and the elder Dan, Father Dan Hurley, were wise and they helped Kevin and I find our way beside them. <laughs> we had great times, deep, rich prayer. Surprisingly enough for Dr. Domes, he even cooked good meals. Chris advised us later on, though, as a trustee, in small and big things, like buying a tractor, and very strategic questions of furthering an involvement with the university 
that was still discovering our purpose. Chris is an example of the Franciscan tradition. He walks the path and shares it with others. He grew from his own place in another Christian community to enter the Catholic community and by doing that celebrate the richness of all of our lives that he wishes for everyone. He and Sister Kathy Doherty, who I treasure and honor here as well today, along with all the Franciscan sisters who have charged through these years, forming and shaping what we celebrate now. Uh, Kathy was our leader of ministries at Bonn as an exceptional leader on our campus at integrating admissions along with the other efforts in ministry. Thoughtfully thinking about this, she and Chris helped to form a program that continues today, fostering at the mountain, a place where students yet to decide to come to Bonas have joined us. Finally, and a little bit more, Mary, I thank you again for all of who you are as an educator, your incredible capacity to work and care for others, and alongside Chris, I have watched both of you I've experienced you both work together in our refounding efforts, in our renewal of our life, directing us more and more in substantial ways and including others, welcoming others into the efforts. You together have helped the mountain go beyond the mountain into your areas of Virginia and other areas. And now we're here today. As one of your friends, long lasting celebrating your life and speaking these sentences, I'm glad we had a little laughter and that there's a little seriousness, but also silliness, primarily because the depth of reality is so apparent to us. Chris leads well and is primarily a servant leader. You know this already and you will see this. He sets an example not by trying to set an example. He will continue to offer you much and I give thanks and praise that he is here. I'm grateful that I've been part of your life and will also be as long as we are companions on the journey, the Franciscan journey of education. Even before he entered the Roman church, it was clear Chris was Franciscan. Chris is an educator. He's a leader for a new time in higher education along with our wonderful new president at St. Bonaventure University, Dr. Dennis DePiro, Brother Ed Coghlan from Siena, and talking from one from St. Francis College, recently there is new leadership called forth. May Christ bless you, Chris. May Christ bless all leaders here. And may all of us be blessed. Amen. 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 Thank you, Father Riley. I would now like to introduce my friend, Ms. Carol Graham, Aston Township Commissioner, representing the city of Aston, Pennsylvania. Good afternoon, everyone. To say that I am proud and humbled to be among all these distinguished guests on this very special occasion would be an understatement. I truly would like to thank Newman University for the opportunity to welcome Dr. and Mrs. Sims and everyone in attendance today to my hometown of Aston, Pennsylvania. Newman and Aston have a long history of togetherness dating back to a time when the Sisters of St. Francis was a small community and St. John Newman celebrated mass. The sisters were here when my family emigrated from Ireland settled and worked at the mills right down the hill where my family and I live today. When you enter our town, you are welcomed by a sign with the greeting, Welcome to Aston, a community that cares. Having living here since I was young, I can honestly say these are true and heartfelt words. Just as I believe these words also refer to the Newman community, and we see it every day in all the good things you do. 
Our town is a blend of old and new, a melting pot of views, ideals, and values. And in that blend, we have been blessed with this wonderful university that shines on the top of the hill overlooking the landscape that some of us call home. On behalf of myself and fellow commissioners, I would like to offer our sincere congratulations to Dr. and Mrs. Dome as the sixth president of Newman University. We very much look forward to working with you, to all our future endeavors together, and to all of the incredible things God has planned for us. And Dr. Dome, as you look down from the hill overlooking the landscape, please know that Aston is your home too. Welcome to the, na welcome to the neighborhood, Chris and Mary. Thank you, Carol. It is now my great pleasure to introduce State Representative Leanne kruger Branicky representing the 161st Legislative District of the Pennsylvania House of Representatives. Good afternoon, everyone. It's an honor to be with you today to bring welcome on behalf of the Pennsylvania House of Representatives and my 202 colleagues in the State House. Um, I must tell you that I'm so honored to, to represent Newman University in the State House. I've got a prayer in my office that I was given upon my first visit, the prayer of St. Francis. And I often read it and think of you before we take tough votes on the House floor, votes that will impact the environment, votes that will impact the most vulnerable against us. Um, because I, like you, am a person of faith, and I believe that our call is to do justice and to love mercy and to walk humbly with God as the prophet Micah has instructed us. It's been an honor to partner with Newman in the time that I've been in office um, to develop a wonderful relationship with Dr. Miranda, to advocate for your programming, um, and to even host educational events here on this site. And so Dr. Domus, I look forward to collaboration with you as well. I welcome you to this place, and I'll be proud to partner with you moving forward. Thank you so much. Thank you, Representative kruger Branicky. It is now my great pleasure to introduce Senator Tom Killian, State Senator for the 9th District. And following my colleague and, and the others, I noticed how brief folks were, so you can see I've crossed out a lot. <laughs> but good afternoon. Thank you for inviting me to attend this ceremony and an opportunity for me to congratulate Dr. Christopher Domez as he begins his tenure as the sixth president of Newman University. I also have to take this opportunity to thank Rosalie Miranda, who I've known very well, who has served for president for more than two decades and in other capacities for more than four decades. Thank you for your ongoing strong commitment to the Aspen community and all of Delaware County. President Domez will undoubtedly bring continued success to Newman University. His impressive record of accomplishment spans three decades in higher, the higher education field. I wish him much continued success as he takes his helm here at Newman and continues his vision of excellence for the students, faculty, staff, and alumni. Congratulations, Dr. Nomas. I look forward to working with you as you work to make Newman University even better university than it is today. And, and again, thank you for inviting me. But I have to say, as you heard from uh, uh, Commission, uh, Commissioner Graham, you, you've entered a wonderful community uh, here in Aston in Delaware County. We are a unique, wonderful place. You'll find that we all have each other's back, regardless of party, Republican, Democrat, religious affiliation. At the end of the day, here in Delaware County, we stick together to get it done. Thank you. Best wishes. Congratulations. Thank you, Senator Killian. It's now my great pleasure to introduce Congressman Patrick Meehan, representing the 7th District of Pennsylvania in the U.S. House of Representatives. Uh, Dr. Domes and Mary, uh, Dr. Miranda, Your Eminence, it is a real pleasure, thank you, to have the opportunity to participate with so many in this, uh, this, this august celebration of the inauguration, and it is a, a particular 
privilege of mine when I represent this district, the United States House of Representatives, to prepare remarks for the congressional record, uh, which I have done, which will memorialize this particular event and the inauguration of Dr. Domes. So this will, I will make sure that this stays behind. But um, I am particularly grateful to have been able to be part of this tremendous legacy by representing this district and the work that has been done over the course of these 50 years, but really 40 years under the association with Dr. Melinda. And your vision, which I think in some ways is fit by this particular building in your center, the place in which we look at the preparation of young minds and bodies for, for the future, the fitness of this institution at a very challenging time to be looking forward to preparing the hearts and minds of this next generation of students, not only to go out into the tomorrow prepared, but to share in the readiness by having the two things that I think characterize this, this university so well. The sense of personal preparation by virtue of the connectedness that you have created where every student feels a part, a meaningful part, and most importantly, as they leave, they do so with a sense of values that are associated with the Franciscan traditions, perhaps no more appropriate that in this week in which we celebrate the feast day of St. Francis, that we wish uh, that Dr. Domes, you may inherit that legacy and continue to be the preparer of those instruments of peace uh, to allow us to continue forward. I'll only close my remarks by saying, Father Riley, if we could get you to start the next session of Congress, I think I would be particularly <laughs> proud. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Congressman Meehan. It is now my pleasure to introduce Deacon Dan DeLuca, representing the Board of Trustees of Newman University. Mr. Chairman and members of the New Newman University community, honored guests and friends, in the name of the Board of Trustees, it is my privilege to welcome Dr. Chris E. Domes as the sixth president of Newman University. Chris, as a fellow St. Bonaventure University alumnus, I am most pleased to add my welcome to all of the welcomes you're receiving today. I assure you that the Board of Trustees stands ready to work with you in the implementation and the advancement of Newman's core values of reverence, integrity, service, excellence, and stewardship. We recognize that together with the Sisters of St. Francis of Philadelphia and officers of the university, the faculty, staff, and volunteers, our challenge is to provide <clears throat> a quality and enriching Catholic Franciscan education to our students. That is a learning environment founded on the teachings of Jesus and the gospel and the philosophy of education whose purpose it is to serve our sisters and brothers and the common good. Formed in Franciscan values and coupled with outstanding experience, you bring to Newman University the quality of servant creative leadership that will allow us to continue to develop and advance opportunities for our students with the best of Catholic Franciscan education. The Board of Trustees is alert to the continued challenges that are before us, including the continued advancement of our Catholic identity, marketing and enrollment strategies, sound financial management, new relevant programs, and excellent academic, spiritual, and social experiences. Dr. Rosalie Miranda is passing on to you the baton of servant leadership based on listening and collaboration, which will serve you well in addressing these issues. And so today begins a new chapter in the history of Newman University. Interestingly, one can say that Newman is now officially co-ed with our first male president. 
profoundly grateful for the accomplishments of yesterday, we look forward with confidence to the promise of tomorrow. Chris Pache Ebene, peace and all good to you, to your wife Mary, your family, your presidency, and Newman University. Chris, congratulations. Thank you, Deacon Dan. I would now like to call to the podium Sister Mary Catherine Doherty, Congregational Minister of the Sisters of St. Francis of Philadelphia. Good afternoon. On behalf of all of the Sisters of St. Francis of Philadelphia, it is my great pleasure to welcome officially Dr. Chris Domes as the sixth president of Newman University. Your credentials and experience in higher education are impressive. In your career, you have had great success in strategic planning, expanding academic programs, enrollment management, campus growth, fundraising, and community relations. All of these accomplishments position you well to lead Newman into the future. As the founders and sponsors of Newman, the sisters are excited with your deep love for, the, for and commitment to the Franciscan tradition. Over the years, we have been delighted to see our Franciscan charism become so deeply rooted in the academic, spiritual, social, and athletic dimensions of the university. Members of the university community know well, as uh, Deacon Dan just mentioned, the core values of respect, integrity, excellence, service, and stewardship. The faculty and administration continuously study and explore the Franciscan intellectual tradition, engaging in dialogue and prayer together, and then applying it effectively to their respective disciplines. This rigor has made Newman the great university it is today. Dr. Domes and Mary, we're delighted to have Mary with us as well. The Sisters of St. Francis offer you our prayerful support as you accept the call to serve as president. We are confident in your leadership and we, your sisters, some of, men, of who are here today, will accompany you as you further the mission and vision, providing innovative, transformational education in the Catholic Franciscan tradition. Trusting in the providence of God, we move forward together joyfully. May God bless you and Mary as you commence leading Newman. Thank you, Sister Kathy. Now it's my extreme pleasure to call to the podium the Most Reverend Archbishop of Philadelphia, Charles J. Chaput. Dr. and Mrs. Domes, members of the Newman University family community, Sisters of St. Francis of Philadelphia, the genius of Catholic higher education is very simple. It forms the mind, the heart, and the soul with a love for God and a love for life. When the Catholic University is faithful to its mission, these two yearnings, these two loves that are rooted so deeply in our human identity come together in creating a Christian worldview that ennobles the human being as a whole. 
This is the beauty of Newman University. At its best, in all of its educational efforts, it gives real meaning to the words human dignity and the common good. It offers an immersion in the virtues and a reverence for humanity's material and spiritual needs, the realities of the visible and invisible world, all of which are enriched by belief in Jesus Christ. To put it another way, Catholic higher education is heir to the great, the greatest actually, intellectual, moral, and cultural heritage in human history. It has the deepest answers to who and why man is. Catholic education is beautiful because it's true, and it has every reason to be on fire with confidence and apostolic zeal. That deeply Catholic confidence and zeal marked every moment of Dr. Rosalie Miranda's tenure. What an extraordinary record of service. It's a privilege to call her a friend. But exactly those same virtues have marked and will mark the leadership of Dr. Chris Domes, a man of exceptional ability and vision who will now build for the future. So this is a moment of joy and hope and gratitude. And it's a very great pleasure to welcome Dr. Domes and Mary to the Archdiocese of Philadelphia and as this moment celebrates the new president of Newman University. Welcome and congratulations. And now we come to the focal point of today's ceremony, the investiture of Dr. Chrissy Domes as the sixth president of Newman University. I'd like to invite to this podium Mrs. Mary Domes, who will assist with the investiture, along with Mr. Jim Delaney, chair of the Newman University Board of Trustees, Dr. Rosalie Miranda, fifth president of Newman University, and Sister Kathleen Doherty, congregational minister of the Sisters of St. Francis of Philadelphia. It is with great privilege and pleasure for me to be, here, to be here with you today to confer Newman University's highest office upon Dr. Chris E. Domes. Newman University's board has made an excellent choice in Chris E. Domes. He is a man who has spent his life in the service of Catholic higher education, and he has earned the confidence of all who join him in this great cause. Today he will receive a symbol of his office, the President's Medallion, which he will wear around his neck at honor con convocations, commencements, and other important ceremonial occasions. Its weight is a reminder of the heavy responsibilities that he must be willingly carried by all who occupy the position of leadership and the design on his face, a reproduction of the university seal, is a representation of the large community he serves. Chris E. Dones, will you please come forward? So how's this? Right here. Is this a good spot? Perfect. <laughs> we got it. You have been selected to serve as the president of Newman University. It is my great pleasure as chair of the Newman University Board of Trustees to install you in that office with all its rights, privileges, and responsibilities. By accepting the President's medallion, you accept the charge to honor the core values of reverence, integrity, service, excellence, and stewardship as you carry out the duties of President of Newman University.
this is heavy. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the sixth president of Newman University, Chris Domes. Thank you so very much. What a glorious day. What a glorious day. Good afternoon and welcome. I am honored to be here on this beautiful campus among the faculty, staff, alumni, the Sisters of St. Francis of Philadelphia, friends of Newman University, the citizens of Aston, Pennsylvania, and those who cherish this wonderful wonderful university. To Mr. Jim Delaney and members of the Board of Trustees, thank you for your confidence in me. I promise to do my utmost to ensure that Newman University continues to grow and flourish. To Archbishop Chaput, thank you for your words of encouragement, and I am grateful for your prayers and your support. To Rayana, Marty, Michelle, Dr. Swanick, Dr. Flynn, Mr. Francis, my dear friend and Father Dan Riley, Commissioner Graham, Representative Kruger Branicki, Senator Killian, Congressman Meehan, Deacon Dan, and Sister Kathy. Thank you for your greetings and your salutations. Your presence at this ceremony has meant a great deal to me and to the Newman University community. Thank you so very much. And also a, a shout out to my distinguished college and university delegates and colleagues in higher education. Thank you for being present. My heartfelt thanks for you, for, to you for being with us today. I would like to thank and recognize our students. Thank you. The student delegates, volunteers, and all the students who are present today. Today is really about you. It is an honor for Mary and me to have members of our family join us for this occasion. My parents, Bill and Virginia Domes, Mary's mother, Patricia, my brothers and their wives, Mary's brothers, sisters, and their spouses, cousins, aunts, uncles, nephews, they all made the journey here to be with us today. Thank you so much.
We are also appreciative that many of our colleagues and friends from Virginia, Wisconsin, Ohio, Massachusetts, Florida, Missouri, Western New York, made the trip to Aston, Pennsylvania to celebrate the future of Newman University. I want to also acknowledge my beautiful wife, Mary. She is truly my partner. When U Newman University said yes to me, you received an additional gift in the person of Mary Domes. I am humbled and inspired to be surrounded by the com this community of well-wishers who believe in the transformational power of a Catholic Franciscan education. This beautiful campus sits on holy and venerable ground, ground that has been blessed by the dedication and efforts of generations of the Sisters of St. Francis of Philadelphia. It was here on this holy hill that a college to educate sisters to serve, teach, and minister to people in need came to life. During the last few months, I've had an opportunity to listen to the stories of the early days of Our Lady of Angels College, now Newman University. I've heard stories of compassion and service to others. Each story reflected the sisters' commitment to excellent teaching, service to the poor, to quality of liberal arts education and joyful optimism that the belief in the belief that God is always present. This community of Franciscan women founded this institution of higher learning to bring hope, healing, and life to the people of God. They have nurtured this Catholic mission, remained steadfastly committed to fostering its Franciscan tradition and values. Graduates of Our Lady of Angels College Newman College, and now Newman University have always prepared themselves to be creative moral leaders, leaders who have courage to bring Catholic Franciscan values into our world. From the beginning, the sisters engaged and brought along lay women and men to serve alongside them in forming and developing this ministry of higher education. Newman University has been blessed with strong, compassionate, and competent leaders. One leader stands out, and she is here to share this moment with me and the Newman University community, Dr. Rosalie Miranda, President Emeritus. Dr. Miranda, thank you for your friendship, your inspirational leadership, and your unwavering dedication to Newman University. Thank you so much. <laughs> Newman University stands here today as a testament to Dr. Miranda and the educational leaders who have graced the halls of this great university. Their work is alive and well in our classrooms, labs, and residence halls. Those of us who have committed ourselves to the mission and have been entrusted with the responsibility of continuing to strengthen this institution, we, may ne we must never forget how so many have loved Newman University so well. Leading is a great privilege. It must be taken on with care, guided always by the rich heritage of the founders and relying on the enduring Catholic Franciscan mission and values of reverence, integrity, service, excellence, and stewardship. Our Franciscan educational tradition teaches us that we must prepare our students to embrace the hurt, problems, challenges of the world and not to retreat from them. In his teachings and writings, St. Bonaventure captured and framed for us St. Francis's determination to fully 
challenge the worst of human nature through joyful optimism, driven by the truth that God is truly in our midst. St. Bonaventure proclaimed, three things are necessary to be fully alive, regardless of status, gender, or age. Truth of faith, which brings understanding, love of God, which brings compassion, endurance of hope, which brings perseverance. Though it has been eight centuries since St. Bonaventure wrote these words, I believe that they speak directly to our work in Catholic higher education today. Faith leads to understanding. Compassion is transformational. Enduring hope brings perseverance. To truly be alive, one must have faith, an authentic belief that God is truly present in our world. We must provide an environment where students can strengthen their relationship with God. This is foundational to Franciscan spirituality. During the time of St. Bonaventure and St. Francis, there were knights and troubadours. These were individuals of honor and lovers of an ideal. Knights were generous, fearless, and faithful. St. Francis of Assisi saw his ministry and his life in this image. Framed by this cultural notion of knighthood, Francis preached the gospel message of Jesus. His public ministry and preaching drew upon the ideals of being a knight for God. To Francis of Assisi, a person of faith, a knight for God, must fight for the poor and marginalized, for the oppressed and the forgotten. Francis armed himself with God's love and tackled the problems of his time. Here at Newman University, we are the Knights. Sir Francis Knight is our mascot, and he is present at many, in fact, here he comes now. Sir Francis, we'll see you at the reception. All right. As you can see, Sir Francis rallies our community to cheer on our teams and bring smiles to those he encounters. Sir Francis is an example and symbol on our campus of our Franciscan spirit. As you witness and interact with the Newman family, it becomes apparent at the moment you step on this campus that that spirit is alive and well. Like Francis of Assisi in his day, we must find ways to strengthen and foster that spirit. I would suggest that our world needs more knights, people who have an authentic belief, a passion for a mission, fearless and faithful champions, people who understand who they are in the world. The second notion articulated by St. Bonaventure is to show compassion in our hearts for each person. To be engaged in a transformational way in the world, one must have the love of God, which brings about real change. We live in a very cynical time. We are in desperate pursuit to find places and people in our lives that express joy, optimism, and compassion. As a society, We are hungering for spirituality, meaning, and connections. And at the same time, we have lost trust in or allegiance to institutions, organizations, and government. This generation of students finds themselves at the epicenter of this reality. Our students are looking for engagement and purpose in a time when one can find daily examples of deep-rooted anger, high levels of mistrust and division. Institutions with strong purpose-driven missions can become places of healing, hope, peace, and renewal. Here at Newman University, 
we have a distinctive purpose driven mission. We embrace our commitment to personal teaching and learning, experiential career focused education, a comprehensive set of academic offerings, and above all, our Catholic mission rooted in a Franciscan message of understanding, compassion, and hope. It is our destiny as a Catholic university in the Franciscan tradition to respond to the needs of this generation with compassionate hearts. And then in turn, I believe, they will, we will ask our students and they will respond with a compassionate heart to those they encounter in their lives. St. Bonaventure's final element of being fully alive asks us to be people of enduring hope. Through perseverance, we are called to never give up on the most important things in life. We are also asked to be people of action with an unwavering passion for life. On this idea of enduring hope, I find myself looking out and seeing both opportunities and challenges on the horizon for us here at Newman University and for Catholic higher education. We must remain committed to a strong liberal arts, high quality education and professional preparation. However, our Franciscan intellectual tradition tells us that education alone does not instill care for creation, compassion for others, or a commitment to speak the truth. Therefore, we must remain committed to helping our students understand the rises values of reverence, integrity, service, excellence, and stewardship. We must also show them how to integrate those values into their lives. We must find creative ways to be collaborative, to provide access for more students to experience this kind of mission. And we must not be afraid to be bold. Newman University's vision and mission is to prepare students academically by teaching them how to think critically and express themselves clearly. It also ensures that we fulfill a higher calling to instill in our students a commitment to make a difference in the world, to help them become caring, contributing members of their communities, their churches, their professions, their nation, and the world. At Newman, we educate the whole person. Framed for our Catholic mission in the Franciscan tradition, this is our hope, our perseverance, our call to action. We do this by pursuing a commitment to excellence in all that we do, by inviting each student into the experience of true servant leadership, by celebrating diversity and building a strong community, by showing each student through example the importance of living the RISE's values, by preparing students to be ethical decision makers and visionary leaders, by supporting the notion of lifelong learning, by marrying real community needs with a student's desire to learn and help others, and by ensuring opportunities for leadership in inter intercollegiate athletics and in service to the Newman community and beyond. As we begin this new chapter in the history of Newman University, together we will ensure that every graduate of this institution is, is prepared to make meaningful contributions and live a life of true success, a life centered in faith, compassion, and enduring hope. In closing, I'm excited to share with you that I begin my journey as president of Newman University with a profound sense of optimism. 52 years after the university's founding, we have come together to celebrate not a person or an office, but an institution, a mission, an inspiring vision, and a set of enduring values. It is my hope that we truly recognize the potential in our students and that our commitment to their success will lead us to a bright future. If we embrace the road ahead with gusto, live our mission, 
and believe in our vision, we will realize our greatest aspiration to be a living legacy to the founders and educational pioneers who came before us. Standing here today, I'm aware that I'm in the midst and the presence of a community of students and teachers, friends, family, and colleagues, and brothers and sisters in Christ. Each of you, each of you, has traveled a unique path, both literally and figuratively, to arrive at this place at this moment in time. As you leave this ceremony, I would ask you to think about your place in the life of Newman University. Your presence today binds you to this community in a very special way. Your friendship, your support, your prayers, and your efforts are important and deeply valued. Follow us, come along with us, follow that night wherever he goes, and to the community center and back when we have, when we have a reception. <laughs> Engage with us. As we move forward, know that you're members of this Newman family, now and forever. Thank you, and God bless Newman University. Thank you, President Domes, for your inspiring words and your vision for Newman University. We welcome you as our president and look forward to working with you as this university moves into a future filled with high achievement in the service of the people of Pennsylvania, the nation, and the world. Now for my favorite part of every ceremony at Newman, I would like everyone to stand and remain standing for the blessing of St. Francis, our alma mater, and the final benediction. I invite Sister Mary Catherine Doherty, Congregational Minister of the Sisters of St. Francis of Philadelphia to the podium to lead us in the blessing. I'm going to depend on all of our sisters to lead in the blessing. <laughs> and I'd ask everyone to please extend their hand in blessing. Archbishop, please join us. May the Lord bless And I'd like to call up to the podium the Most Reverend Archbishop Charles J. Chaput, Archbishop of Philadelphia, to give our final benediction. The Lord be with you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he show his face to you and have mercy on you. May he turn his countenance to you and give you peace. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Let us go in peace. I would ask you all to please be seated and to remain seated throughout the recessional. Once again, thank you for being part of this momentous occasion for Newman University. After the recessional is finished, you're all invited to the reception in the community hall of the Miranda Center for Sports, Spirituality, and Character Development, back there. 
I look forward to seeing you all there.